Take a look at the Petzl ID, ID standing for Industrial Descender. This is a descent control device made by Petzl to conform to the NFPA 1983. She is 22 kilonewton strong or 5,000 pounds. Um, she has three uh, specific functions at which she excels, um, repelling, lowering, such as a patient or a rescuer, and for the purpose of belay. What we're going to do in this little tutorial is we're going to take a look at some of the safety fe features on the ID. We're going to look at the different forms of um, utilizing it and the correct way to reeve it and to ident how to identify if you've reeved it or threaded the rope through incorrectly. I'm going to start out by looking at the positioning of the ID and specifically the positioning of the handle. So when we look at the handle you'll see that it has a slight curve to it. Um, one thing to keep in mind, one thing to remember is when operating that handle we want to close the curve to lock the device and we want to open the curve or open up the handle in order to descend or put it into belay position. So the first position sitting in now is the store position and this is only used when there is no rope inside the ID, when it hasn't been reeved with a rope. That's for when it's being stored on the truck or on your harness or in the store in the store position. The second position is slightly opened and that's actually the lock position that causes the cam to lock down. That would be, if we think about a bar rack for example, that would be your working position that now allows you to go hands free. Position number three would be the belay position. And that really is just with the handle pointing straight up and away from you. That's the belay position. Position number four would be the descent position. That's either for lowering somebody or if you yourself are repelling. And the final position is the panic lock position. The panic lock is when it is extended all the way down and in this position you've descended too quick, you've pulled too hard on your handle and it is panic locked. When the device panic locks, you will have to raise it up about halfway. You will hear a click, and then you can come back down, find the sweet spot, and continue your descent. Okay, let's open the ID up, and we'll take a look at some of the safety features inside, and how the innards of the ID actually What happens is as the rope passes in, it always passes in at the top and feeds out at the bottom. So the bottom is your loop side, either going to your rescuer or to the anchor point, depending on how you're utilizing the device. What happens is as the rope feeds in, this cam pinches the rope against this plate. And it's on this cam that we're gonna find our first safety feature. And what there is, is right on this rim here, is what's called the wear indicator. And if you rub your finger along the wear indicator, you'll feel a small ridge. When you can no longer feel that ridge, this device is out of service. Another spot to look for is on the steel plate right here. That will wear and will develop a small hole, excessive wear. You'll get a small hole where you can see through to the polymer underneath. And again, at that point, it's out of surface. The same goes for the cam itself. Right on the lip here, when it's had excessive wear, that will also develop into a small hole. As soon as you see indications of that hole, it needs to come out of service. Another safety function of the device, or a safety component, is this little catch-all. And the purpose of that, if you take a look at it, she has some rather jagged teeth. The purpose of that 
is if you incorrectly reeve the rope through the ID, this little catch will kick in and catch the rope and prevent you falling to your death. Okay, let's compare and identify some of the markings on the ID. First, we'll take a look at the markings on the cam itself. And the first thing we're going to see on the top, it says rope, and it has a double bullseye. The double bullseye indicates Kern Mantle. Down below that, just down below the center point, right across here, we have the numbers 11.5 equal to not less than. That's the diameter of the rope. And then on the other side of that, we have 13 mil equal to not greater than, again, the diameter of the rope. Two more markings, very important ones. You may not be able to see these on camera, but down at the bottom is the loop that I was talking about earlier. So that loop side means that's where the rope feeds out from the loop. Just at the top, on the, the other side on the top, you'll see a hand. Remember, that's where the rope is always going to feed in. Feeds in at the hand, out at the loop. The only exception to this rule is when not being used as a descent control device and it's being used as a substitute for a pulley or a self camming pulley for the purpose of haul systems. Let's turn the ID over and we'll take a look at the markings on the back there. So we can see that it says NFPA 1983 22 kilonewtons or 5,000 pounds and that is 1983 uh, 2006 edition. The important thing I want you to note here is there is a little marker, a little arrow and that corresponds with markings on the handle. The, the first one is in the store position so the ID right now is sitting in the store position and right there it is marked store. When I open the ID up into the lock position there's our lock position and again it corresponds to the little marking on there for lock. Going into the belay position and once again there's it says belay and it, mark, it lines up with our little arrow. Descent position and again there it's marked descent and again that's our range of motion and it lines up with the arrow.